everyone. Welcome back to Building Games on AWS. This is episode three of the Game Analytics Pipeline series. My name is Gina Gizzi. I'm a solutions architect with AWS Game Tech. And in today's episode, we're going to do a deep dive architecture review of the Game Analytics Pipeline solution. But first, before we do that, let's set the scene a little bit. You're an indie game developer developing a mobile Unity game called Peculiar Wizards, where players save up for coins to buy wizard hats to dress up their wizards. It's a concept idea. And you want to be able to measure and track different game metrics, like, for example, which wizard hats are the most popular, which ones are the least popular, uh, player demographic information. You want to track game events, like when players sign up for a new account, when they sign into a new account, and so on. But to do this, you need a data analytics pipeline. And to complicate things a little more, you're a team of one. The game analytics pipeline solution is a really great option for you because it's modeled as infrastructure as code, meaning it spins up in less than 10 minutes in an automated fashion. And it's also entirely serverless, so there is no infrastructure for you to manage at all. So let's take a look at the architecture for this solution. Really, when it comes down to it, the entire architecture can be boiled down to something as simple as this ingest, store, process, and visualize. These are the four main boxes of what's pretty much happening in the entire game analytics pipeline. You ingest game event data, you store it in durable object storage, you process it to optimize it for analytics, and you visualize it using different dashboards. When it comes down to it, this is all that's really happening. Now, to put this in terms of AWS services that are being used and look at what's really happening under the hood, here is the full architecture. Let's walk through it. First, we have the data producers. So these can be mobile game clients, matchmaking servers, game consoles, multiplayer servers, anything else that generates data that you want to capture. These data producers send their telemetry data into what's called the Kinesis Data Streams, which is a real-time streaming service with your own custom consumer or producer applications, which in this case stores your real-time data to be processed by other components in the solution that we'll walk through. Kinesis Data Streams sends the data to Kinesis Data Firehose, which is real-time data streaming that stores data to be saved in an S3 data lake. Before storing it, a Lambda function, which is serverless compute capacity in the cloud, uh, this Lambda function that is connected to the Firehose actually pre-processes the data by both enriching and validating that incoming data. Once this data is processed, the data is actually batched and it's stored in Amazon S3, which is our durable object storage in the cloud, and it makes for a really great data lake. So here the data is stored actually in Apache Parquet format, which helps to optimize queries both for performance and cost because it's a columnar data format as opposed to using row-based data formats. AWS Glue is our ETL or Extract, Transform, and Load service that provides what's called the Glue Data Catalog. And what this is is it basically just stores the metadata such as the table, the table definition, the schema, it also creates what's called a glue ETL job, which partitions the data to make queries more efficient. In order to gain insights into your process data, you can use Amazon Athena to run ad hoc SQL queries using either queries that are included with the solution prepackaged for you or by writing and executing your own SQL queries. You can also use QuickSight, which is our business intelligence tool to create dashboards and visualizations to better interpret your data and even embed these dashboards in any applications that you might want to. On the right-hand side of this architecture, we have 
the consumers of this data that you're analyzing and processing. This could be data analysts that can look at QuickSight dashboards to monitor KPIs or key performance indicators such as total revenue per day. Uh, you could have data engineers that can use Amazon Athena to write more complex queries to assess different KPIs like average revenue per daily active user and so on. Now let's talk a little bit about streaming analytics. So that entire first portion was batch analytics. For streaming analytics, we return back to the Kinesis data streams in the beginning. And Kinesis data streams can send data to two different places in parallel. So in this place, it's sending data both to Kinesis Data Firehose and then another service called Kinesis Data Analytics for real-time data streaming. This service is an easy way to provide you the ability to generate live KPIs with real-time data. So this, uh, this application actually generates real-time metrics such as logins per minute, registrations per minute, purchases by country per minute, and more. These metrics are also post-processed with a Lambda function and published to a CloudWatch dashboard, which is our monitoring service. These dashboards can be monitored by your live ops teams, your service teams, to ensure that your game's healthy and balanced from an operations perspective, and also just to monitor any game metrics that you might want to be monitoring live. You can also create alerts based on different key metrics and CloudWatch alarms to send out uh, alerts and notify your team using Amazon SNS, which is our simple notification service that can notify you through email if there's any errors or alarms that go off. So now that we've covered the flow of data throughout this entire pipeline, including both batch and real-time data, the last section of this architecture is around configuration and management of this solution. So the solution includes something called the Solution API, which basically just enables administrators to register new games with the solution. If you do have multiple games that are generating data and you want to be able to analyze with one single pipeline, you can also create what's called API keys for your different applications to send data via REST API, which is one way to actually integrate AWS with your game. And we'll talk about the different ways to ingest data in a future episode. The solution API also comes with an AWS Lambda authorizer that allows you flexibility to either integrate with your existing authentication solution, for example, Cognito, or maybe one of your own. And finally, we have the storage of the configuration data for the solution. So this is actually using uh, DynamoDB, which stores the API keys for your solution, as well as the application IDs for each of the applications or games that you have. And we'll walk through the API keys and the application IDs as we begin exploring the solution in the AWS Management Console. I want to point out that while it says the consumers here can be live ops teams or service teams or data engineers or even data analysts, it can also just be you, especially if you're just a team of one. That's why in the upcoming episodes, I'm going to show you how exactly you can use a solution to consume data and how all of this works so that you can do this as a team of one without having to rely on a service team or data engineers to do it for you. Keep in mind, all of this infrastructure is automatically deployed for you. You don't need to set this up yourself, and we'll see exactly how all of this works in the next episode where we walk through how to deploy this solution. So that's it for the architecture review. Make sure to stay tuned for next episode where we'll walk through step-by-step -step in the AWS Management Console how to actually deploy the solution and also how to generate sample game events so that we have some play data to use as we begin exploring the solution.